humans into a new type of society where the jobs that were once funded under certain mechanisms from the federal government and the state government are no longer there. That we really should be striving to say to school systems that we want our sons or daughters to be challenged within the regular ed curriculum. We expect that. We also expect the schools to be working with our sons or daughters so that they can be more um, self-reliant perhaps on themselves and not on other people to help give them direction when they leave school. And those are the changes that I think are occurring. And there are wonderful special ed teachers, and I don't want to minimize that. Um, but all they need is a parent to simply say, you know, how hard would it be to embed this in the IEP? And for a teacher to say, well, we could or we couldn't, we still have to believe whatever I shared this evening is what do you wish to, um, in these final, let's say, couple years perhaps, what do you want to say to the school? as being the, the advocate for your child at this point in time, but then in time, that, that advocacy really comes from your son or from your daughter. So, anyways, do you have any questions? Yes? I actually had a 504 meeting this morning, and um, I, they were getting really annoyed with me because um, I would we would suggest things and they would say, oh, well, the teacher already does that. We don't really need to put that, make that in the 504. Mm -hmm. But from a parent's point of view, I feel like that makes them accountable, right? And well, what, I, I just, what, what, you know what, I'm what were like, they doing that you weren't agreeing with? That they were well, doing? no, it was stuff like um, proximity to the teacher, paired with an organized student. My son has asthma, okay. and so just similar. And they would just say, "Oh, well, he's already. We already do stuff like that. We don't need to put it in the 504." But should you I fight more to put it in the 504? I mean, should I, how specific yeah, do you, you have say, to be? Think of it this way. Oh, this is good. This is what I say to parents. Just think all of a sudden you got a phone call that you you want a house in Hawaii. And you have, you're going to just leave because you, you just you said that you, you don't want to leave, but you're going to leave. And you have a great opportunity in Hawaii. What is the, what's the document you're going to take to Hawaii Public Schools to show them to say this is what my son's accommodations were. So let's say, for instance, right now it sounds it sounds like the accommodations that you have are really you you to trust them to employ those strategies. If it's not in writing, what are you going to take to the school in Hawaii, or what are you going to take to the school in Montana or Texas, wherever it might be? What are you going to take? Well, this is what the schools talked about doing, but it's not in writing. So you have nothing to really support you. It's the very same thing if your son or daughter was now going to graduate and has the 504 plan that isn't specified. It's, you need the specifications in there. And you say, you know, I honestly believe you're probably doing this. I need it in writing. And when can I expect to have it in writing? And that's all you need to say. Because I, they don't, it's, see, to me, I always believe in the uncertainty of life. And if uncertainty really means, especially with my son or daughter, that, that if I'm going to go through this, with whether it's an IEP as well, if I think an IEP stinks, I'm going to say this IEP may have application in this school because everyone loves my daughter and she's been here forever and they understand her. But if that IEP goes to another school, how is it going to read in that other school district? Maybe they don't even understand what it means or what it says. So what you want is clarity and specification. I'm sorry, I took way too long. Um, so, hard to do. Josh. 